Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my channel is about vermiculture and the different kinds of systems and the different kind of worms that are options for the home grower. Today, as I'm going through a fast harvest here and also maintenance of the bin, I'm going to talk about my experience with urban worm bag as well as the vermi bag. In particular, I have the little mammoth. So I'm just going to talk about the compare and contrast of it and give you an idea of why, you know, I prefer one over the other. All right. So first of all, I'm sitting here on a footstool um, and I'm going to harvest my vermi bag little mammoth. I've got these two zippers and I've had this going for about a year and a half. This is probably my fourth or fifth harvest. Now, I don't know if you can hear, but... That zipper is like butter, right? No problem at all. I'm telling you, I didn't even have my urban worm bag for two years, and I used to have to take a pair of pliers to get the zipper moving. With the vermi bag, it's guarded. As I'm, as I'm showing you here, as I am pulling things apart, you can see the zipper is way up here, and the harvest end is way down here. So that's like the length of my finger from my knuckle down to my tip of my finger here. So it's guarded up here against any sort of uh, leakage from overly wet feedings or, or what have you. So that zipper stays nice and clean and um, no problems whatsoever. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull down that one side and then we're going to harvest. I imagine we'll probably get 10 pounds in here and as I'm going through I'm going to show you that you know long-term foods in a continuous flow through you know you do end up having stuff that you know is not complete you know it's you I sift everything that I do um, but if you don't be aware that there will be chunks of stuff that takes longer than three or six months to complete I have again forgotten to bring my claw, so I'm again using my hands, but that's fine. You know me. I'm not, not fussed about getting dirty doing this. So my goal here is to come up right above the zipper when I'm putting my hand inside and digging. And I'm going to do it on one side, and then I'm going to do it on the other. If you go up too far, you risk breaking kind of the thing that clogs it. And keeps it up there so I think that's about enough for this side I'm gonna empty this little hatch and grab that zipper from over here maybe and then to do the other side I move my little mortar tray here over so that it can catch the other side. Okay, so as I'm going through this, I'm not finding a bunch of worms. I do find that there's stuff, stuff in here that's not finished, but I'm really not finding a lot of worms. But overall, the castings are looking really good. So I will tell you that when I had the Urban Worm bag, and I think I had it for just under two years. I hated harvesting it because I would end up laying on my back on the floor, you know, upside down like I'm changing the oil on a car or something. And that was really not comfortable for me. Um, so, you know, that was one of the things. I would always procrastinate in my harvests because I didn't, didn't want to do it because it was uncomfortable and it was messy. This particular bin, um, the directions that they gave on the internet for free for how to make a, a how to make a stand for this is perfect. It gives you something to put your little uh, bin underneath of and basically the harvest falls right directly into it and it doesn't end up all over the floor. So that is another bonus of, of why I think this is better just in general. Um, it doesn't have a cheap plastic 
stand. You make your own out of wood or whatever you want. And then basically the harvest is pretty um, mess free. Now I'm gonna kind of give it a couple of beatings here. I don't know if you can hear the castings falling down into this panel here, but I'm gonna give it a couple of good whacks. And it's not completely collapsed down, but we'll take care of that when we get on the top side. But that basically has everything falling back down where I just harvested from. All right, let me uh, reset the camera and we will go up there and feed. If you're liking this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. Okay, we are back on top now. Let's see what we are doing. Well, that took quite a bit out in the harvest. Look at that. It's, it's, it's fallen probably three or four inches. Um, that's another thing that I did want to mention about the uh, vermi bag versus the urban worm bag. Basically, there's more surface area and it's shallower which is, is better for me because I'm not that tall and for the urban worm bag, I really could not reach all the way down. Um, and that was, I felt as though I needed to do that for some reason. Something sprouting. Hmm. So we're gonna look here. I fed a lot of fruit and vegetables and a lot of bedding. Now I see they've gone through quite a bit of the bedding, but let's look and see what they're doing with the vegetables that I fed them last time. We'll just kind of make a pile here and see what we've got. So avocado shell, one of their favorites. And looks like it's getting to be a decent moisture. Um, I added a gallon when you guys were with me last time. But then I also came back in in a couple of days and felt that it was still, you know, after it had absorbed all the water, it was still a little too dry. So I added a whole nother gallon, which is probably what, eight liters, give or take, uh, to this bag. So that, I think we're back on track now. And I'm just gonna kind of rummage around in here and make sure that everything falls down to the, the bottom so that the next time I harvest, it is all um, shaken down to the bottom and stays a good moisture. If you have pockets at the bottom of the bag, then that will get super dry and won't be good castings. It won't be as good, I mean, it'll still be good, but you don't want super dry clumps at the bottom. That's not good for the beneficial bacteria that you're trying to keep in the system with your castings. So I'm just, as you can see, I'm got my hands almost completely down at the bottom here of the bag. And that's, that's what I wanted to do is to make sure that I could knock everything down flat to the bottom. And uh, that way we can have a good harvest next time. With the urban worm bag, there's no way I could have reached down all the way to the bottom to get the system reset. I think I used to use like a, a broom handle or something. Yeah, I do have old videos of the urban worm bag if you wanted to go back. They're early on in my YouTube days, so they're a little painful. But they are there if you want to look at the old videos of me with my urban worm bag. Okay, so what we've got now, they have really eaten. I'll put a picture below of what I fed and how much bedding we put in here. But I'm willing to be, bet we fed them a couple gallons of food and probably gave them two to three gallons of my prepared bedding. Um, some people ask, you know, what is my prepared bedding? And I will link to the video of my bedding in the description below. And I'll probably also link it at the, bo at the end of the video. But basically, it is about 80% shredded cardboard, and the rest is shredded paper, coconut coir, and then I also use kelp meal. And I always, uh, for at least this bed, I also add my ground eggshell because I will always forget if I don't have it easy in my bedding. All right, let me go grab them some food, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back with the food. First things first, I'm going to put the dry items down below and then the wet food on top. So I have 
some trees and plants that did not make it that I use in the in this bag I have uh, lots of things and it takes time for them to eat it like on the order of probably years um, but the good thing is that it provides structure and air pockets for the worms so that in the event that there is a little bit of uh, anaerobic problem with any particular food that I'm feeding these larger sticks and clumps will um, help out with that okay okay so got some orchid flowers got some lavender got some stuff from the fish tank now let's get the wet food okay so in here I have some greens that went bad these are beet greens and we've got cooked corn on the cob This was in the freezer. I'm not sure I'll be able to identify it. Looks like bananas and peppers and onions. Um, so here, here's one of my, I like to always point out, onions are not a forbidden food. They just basically, um, humans, I don't know. Sometimes people think that worms are more like humans and that they're overly sensitive. But as long as you put them in sparsely and don't, you know, make that their only food, worms will be fine with onions. Especially when you top it off with their favorite food on the planet, at least that I have found, which is melon. Any kind of melon that you can give your worms is basically their favorite food. You will always, if you're trying to trap worms to take fishing or to move to a different system, your easiest way of doing it is to put melon in there. That is their total favorite food ever. All right, let's get them some bedding. Because of course, even though this is a zip system, I don't want to try and encourage any sort of critters flying or otherwise to the bin. For me, it's about one to one. I put in one part water, one part water, one part food to one part bedding, sometimes more with the African night crawlers. That was definitely more than two to one, but uh, these worms were kind of beyond, behind quite a bit because I was on vacation. So this will give them quite a lot to work with until the next time. All right, I did want to let you know that I am an Amazon affiliate and I do link things below. And if you follow those links and purchase something, the channel does get a commission, which does help me buy things for the worms, buy things for the channel and uh, bring you more content. I also have t-shirts available that is also in the link below. All right, guys. Well, if you like this video or if you want to know how to build this stand, I will link the video right over here. YouTube thinks you're going to like this video right over there. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.